Welcome to the Real Estate Syndication Show. Whether you are a seasoned investor or building a new real estate business, this is the show for you. Whitney Sewell talks to top experts in the business. Our goal is to help you master real estate syndication. And now your host, Whitney Sewell. Who is Vinny Smile Chopra? Came to the U.S. from India with $7 in his pocket, and today he has created a portfolio of over $200 million in commercial real estate. He's a CEO of five companies, acquiring and managing diverse multifamily portfolio of 3,500 units, and his team self-manage all the assets. Vinny has walked the walk with over 26 successful syndications during multiple economic cycles, including downturns over 12 years. He has built a very extensive educational academy to teach and mentor investors. Vinny, tell us about this multifamily syndication academy. Thank you, Whitney. Thank you so much. I'm really proud to really talk to everybody about this extensive multifamily academy that teaches new and sophisticated investors how to use other people's money through syndications. That has been my world, to buy apartments from 50 units to 500 units and how to select emerging markets, how to do deal analyzing, investor education, other people money, syndication blueprints, everything I have learned, I teach in this academy and over 500 lectures and also how to manage the assets also and along with lots of great templates and PowerPoints, everything. And I personally also mastermind coach all my students every Wednesday. So to reach me, Whitney, all the students have to, or investors have to just text the word learn, L-E-A-R-N, learn to 474747 or call my team at 925-766-3518. This is your daily real estate syndication show. I'm your host, Whitney Sewell. Today, our guest is Chris Winkler. Thanks for being on the show, Chris. Thank you for having me, Whitney. I really appreciate it. Chris is the president of Silverwood Capital LLC, has five years experience as a note investor and 30 years of experience in raising venture capital, sales, marketing, negotiation, uh, investor acquisition and retention, debt mediation and collection practices. He's personally raised over $5 million in private equity and 20 million in syndication for numerous early stage entities. Chris, thank, thanks again for your time and being on the show. And uh, you know, would you give our listeners a little more about just who you are and what your focus is right now? Okay, sure. So um, right now, you know who I am. I'm a note investor full time. I've been doing it for about five years. I got into it by accident. I um, actually had a marketing seminar. I heard someone talking about notes, and it intrigued me because I've been involved with raising money for intangibles in the past, and I never really was interested in real estate. But when I found out you can buy the mortgages and the notes, and that was a complete whole other world, uh, it really opened my eyes. Yeah. So um, I started educating myself. Started buying. Uh, small notes on first liens in the Rust Belt, and uh, I realized that uh, there's not a lot of money to be made doing that because the value of the property uh, is so low. By the time you foreclose and get in there, you can pretty much just sell it to a wholesaler for what you're in it for. Yeah. Uh, so we switched to junior liens a couple of years ago, and on focusing on. Uh, junior liens and HELOCs on nice homes. And uh, since then, in the last three years, we've averaged about a 56% net ROI on the deals we bought and worked out. So the the junior liens uh, have been really well. The riches are in the niches. Hmm. So tell us, you know, like a recent project or something you're working on now. Well, we just launched our first uh, uh fund for accredited investors to be able to legally pool the money so we can go and buy larger amounts at better prices and then uh, do the workouts that we feel will do better that way because we've been buying up retail for the last few years and they've become really expensive. Uh, There's a lot of new players in the market. A lot of them don't know what they're doing. If they're paying too much, um, it's just like a fix and flip. You know, the money is made when you buy it. If you overpay for that note, by the time you get to where you're going to do something, you, your profits are, the more you spend, the less your profits are. So by going to the, up the food chain with large amounts of capital, we're, we're seeing already lower prices on the notes, which we feel will give us better profits. So uh, that fund launched right before Christmas. 
So we hit the holiday wall, and then you can combine the uh, shutdown. Uh, really kind of turned off the spigot for a while, but now things are warming up. Nice. So capital raising part. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, for the listener who says, you know, a fund, what is a fund as opposed to, you know, just raising capital for a syndication or something? And could you just elaborate on that a little bit? Sure. Well, the fund that we chose was um, we're using an LLC as the vehicle and we are able to form it under a Regulation D Rule 506C offering. What this allows us to do is advertise this fund though only to accredited investors. So a lot of our early investors are not accredited, a lot of our friends and family are not. So we're limited as to prior history with people, but it allows us to advertise, go to shows, market it, uh, uh, to um, lists of accredited investors and other sources. So it, it really helps out doing it that way. And we're selling half of the LLC in, uh, to the investors and uh, in exchange for preferred returns. Nice. So, you know, when, when obviously doing a 506 C and we've talked about on, on the show numerous times. So if a listener doesn't understand what we're talking about there, I would encourage you to go back and listen to a few other shows because we've, uh, 506 C's when you can, you only can take accredited investors and, and, uh, you can advertise, uh, just like Chris, uh, stated, but, uh, you know, tell us, you know, some other reasons maybe why you would choose 506 C as opposed to 506 B. Well, uh, specifically, it was for the ability to um, advertise. And because on a, on a 506B, you, you can take 35 non-accredited investors, but you have to have pre-existing relationships with all of them. So you cannot email market it. You cannot post ads on Facebook, uh, run ads in magazines, even going to trade shows and going up to people and saying, hey, I got a fund. That you know, you're, 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 you're getting in big trouble if, if you're using uh, the B, uh, the 506B. So while we might be limiting our prior investors' uh, ability to participate with us, it opens up a, a bigger world um, by allowing us to talk to anyone we meet and bring it up right before we even know them. Nice. So, you know, I guess, tell us a little bit about how you're uh, promoting that, you know, now that you've done, you've said, okay, we're going to do a 506 C so we can uh, advertise, you know, what's uh, I guess a strategy for making sure we're marketing it the, the best that we can now that we know that we can advertise. Well, that's a good question. So initially getting past the friends and family part of it, we are now reaching out to accredited investors that were a list that we could purchase and or have people do calling for us where they'll set up a, uh, they'll do a certain amount of calls and knowing they're already pre-qualified as accredited investors. Another option is going to these shows and actually speaking at some of them. So we're speaking next week at the IMN show in Fort Lauderdale. And then on the noteworthy show in Newport Beach in early March. So you couldn't go on stage talking about your fund with the 506B, but you can with the C. So right now we're, uh, you know, and we're in a worse spot as our first fund. We're too big for the older investors, but we're too small for a lot of investment banks and placement agents that want to start with 50 to 100 million. And I don't want to go, um, hunting for an elephant on my first safari. I'd rather go and find a smaller animal that I know I can take down. 10 million is a nice round number. We can work out the kinks of the fund and all the mechanics and all the little pieces. And then from there, scale up to a larger, possibly 50 million raise and then you know keep going. Right now there's, there's $9 trillion of our targeted market, junior liens and HELOCs still at the banks that they are holding on to. And, you know, we're, we're dropping the bucket. There's also maybe $150, $200 million of junior liens on the market right now being sold by a number of sellers. So, you know, we're, 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 we want to grow into acquiring more of those notes and uh, as a bigger fund. Nice. Nice. So, you know, with your experience raising capital, I know you can really help you know, a lot of the listeners who are are getting started in that, uh, you know, it's, it's such a, um, 
a way that a lot of people are trying to get started in the syndication business, you know, is by raising capital. And, uh, you know, you, you mentioned a minute ago, you know, you hit, hit the holiday wall and I've experienced that myself, you know, raising for some deals and, and, but, you know, could you elaborate on, you know, what that means a little bit and, and how you uh, would prevent that in the future? Well, uh, that's a good question. You know, a few people mentioned you might want to wait to start your fund until the new year because you will run into the holiday brick wall. And so, you know, right around Thanksgiving, people are getting ready for their family and all that. Then you got a couple of weeks right before Christmas. People are either planning their vacations or preoccupied with family and friends and where they're going and buying gifts. And the last thing on their mind really is uh, investing. So we it, we thought we had enough cushion there to get you know before we launched early November and uh, you know, we got our first uh, investors in and then you know thank, Thanksgiving hit and then Christmas and then the shutdown so but we're we're glad all that's over with. Nice, nice. So. Um, you know, I guess get us, get somebody started, you know, somebody comes up to you and says, Chris, you know, I really want to get into this business or, um, you know, start a fund or at least start raising capital. Uh, you know, you know, you just got 30 seconds to a minute to talk to them and, and they, they tell you, they, you know, give me some tips on getting started. What do you tell them? Well, to raise capital for, to purchase notes, are you referring to or just? Yeah, into- well, I mean, I, notes or, uh, I mean, or syndication, you know, real estate, commercial property, either one, uh, but just helping somebody get started and raising capital. Okay. And that's, you know, that's uh, an important point. So if you don't have the capital, you can't buy anything. So <laughs> ideally you start with your friends and family and then from there, look at your Rolodex and, you know, you've got plenty of professionals like doctors and attorneys and other accountants so they they could be sources of investments and at the same time you want to plant the seed to mention it to their clients because you know the accountants got hundreds of clients and the attorney and the doctor and the dentist and all that so that's kind of the way to go to that because it really starts with friends and family and then high net worth investors ultra high net worth investors and then you're getting into family offices and then eventually institutions. So even for a family office, they're they're investing hundreds of millions of dollars. And a lot of times, even someone like us, we're we're still on that little small side for them. So really our main focus is the high net worth and the ultra high net worth. So going to events where they would be uh, maybe charities, auctions, meetups, um, any events specifically, you know, one option is maybe go to a, doctor's meetup or a anesthesiologist meetup and then just because you know there's nothing stopping you from going and you can just talk about what you're doing nice nice so i would imagine that'd be a little awkward when i walked in there and i wasn't a doctor um but you know how, how would you handle that conversation you know when you're meeting the you know these doctors especially in a place where they don't expect you but um you know what what would that conversation look like when you're getting started and, and meeting these high net worth uh, individuals uh, you know, that's a good point. And you, you want to have basically an elevator pitch uh, uh, that you can, you know, and there's there's some structure to it because you, you want to say, I, I help X by doing X and allowing X to X. And, you know, so y- you form your, your elevator pitch and you really have to not be afraid to go up and talk to someone. So a lot of people just really can't do that. They can't just walk up to a stranger and say hello. So I, I don't have any problems with that. So I'll go up and just say, hi, how are you? Well, what do you do? And uh, they'll go over and they'll say, oh, okay, well, you know, I work with high net worth individuals uh, through a, uh, a real estate notes where we can invest in real estate that's secured by the um, lien on the property and then go into uh, what we've done. So you, you really want to focus it on how what you do can relate to them. So really just that quick one minute elevator pitch is a great way for them to go, oh, okay, you know, that's interesting. You know, we have your card and we can talk later. So you're really not looking to pitch them. You're more just seeing if they're open to being spoke to. And, you know, I've, I've, I've been raising money for a long time and it really takes days, weeks, months, and years to build that trust and seconds to lose it. So you always have to be a hundred percent honest with people. And if you're, a, if you're a liar, you shouldn't be raising money. 
you know, I, I like, I like what you just said. It takes days, weeks, months, and even years to build the trust and seconds to lose it. You know, at, you know, what are some ways that you found to, uh, to go, you know, above and beyond just being transparent and just building that trust with investors? Um, it would, uh, main thing is being honest, doing what you say you're going to do, keep in touch with them, try not to be too pushy or, or, or pressure, trying to develop some kind of rapport with them, find out what they like, you know, you know, keep notes. So, you know, when you talk, Hey, how was the fishing trip? Or, you know, how was the graduation or the baseball game with your son or what have you? So by trying to, and you know, when there's a hundred people, it's, it gets challenging to remember everyone's, um, uh, you know, their life and, and things, but you know, if they're a hunter or a fisher or fisherman or what have you, just, it's really just trying to build some kind of rapport. Oh yeah. You know, that's, and, and not talk about you, shine the spotlight on them. Hmm. I guess, no, they don't, they don't care about you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like that too. Uh, shine the spotlight on them. That's a, that's really good. I've, you know, I've heard, you know, you hear a lot of people talk about the more you let somebody else talk, the more they like you. Yeah, exactly. You got two ears and one mouth and you should use it in proportion. <laughs> so what about uh, any type of CRM that you use that you could recommend when you're keeping track of all these clients and, and, and investors? You know, there's a lot of different things you can use. You can start with the spreadsheet. That's just the name, address, you know, phone number, and email. You can go into something that's uh, a, a nice basic one. I'm still using Insightly. Uh, it seems to be semi-robust and that it'll tie together people and companies and events and projects and all in one place. I'm looking at other, I've looked at other ones, maybe like Close.io and uh, um, um, Call Text, but I'm actually, uh, I think for, for the fund itself, um, as a CRM, I'm, I'm looking to, to go towards something like Juniper Square, which is more of a high-end fund back-end that does have a very nice CRM uh, reporting, ability uh, to generate reports on the fly, K-1s and other things. But just for someone uh, for general, you know, so Insightly is a nice one. Some people like Podio. Uh, there's... You know, there's Infusionsoft, which is kind of expensive and has a big learning curve. Uh, I, I've used it in the past for certain businesses. Um, there's no shortage of CRMs. Yeah, that's for sure. Really just the one that works for you. So, Chris, what's what's been the hardest part about raising capital? Raising the capital. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm in a really, really specific niche, and a lot of people don't even know about notes. And so I try and educate them and show them some case studies of things I've done, track record, you know, and getting that rapport and trust going so that they do feel comfortable to give us a shot. Uh, it's really just, ma you know, managing the contacts and, and making sure you keep in touch with them. A lot of the CRMs will set up uh, drip campaigns and, and or future reminders so you can do an automatic email after a week saying, Hey, it was good talking to you. If you have any questions, get back with me. Then you can skip. It'll remind you to uh, call them the following week. And then after that, you know, so what, what, when you get more than just the basic CRM, you get some really nice abilities to uh, schedule out contacts in the future and they don't all have to be automated. I mean, you don't have to write the email. You can write one email and keep sharing that. Uh, reusing it over and over again. So that's probably the thing that I found is to keep in touch. Don't bug them, but don't be a stranger. So how do you keep from bugging them? How often would you say you're contacting investors just to stay top of mind? Probably, you know, a good couple times a month. So if I have a case study, I might send out an email with a new case study or I'll, I'll write an article and then send a link to that. Um, a post somewhere on something that I thought was interesting or, you know, say a, a lawsuit was settled that benefit us or hurt us. So as you get across, there's a really good book called uh, Jab, 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 Cross by Gary Vanderchuk. And it talks about not just trying to sell on every email, but just putting out relative content that they would find interesting you know, just make a video. I made a video. What is a note? You know, 
everyone has one in their pocket. It's a dollar is a note. It's a promise to pay. So things like that or make up a little video of you talking about things, whatever you're doing, fi fixing, flipping, um, apartments, commercial, what have you, just kind of keeping it, keep feeding them good content that's not ridiculous, but kind of focused on what you're doing and then throw in a, you know, a cross or a punch every now and then for your pitch. No, I like that. If all they hear is you selling, then they're going to turn and go the other way, aren't they? Yeah, they're either going to hate you and unsubscribe or they're going to keep on. And if you, if you just send them like, hey, did you see this? You know, like for, so for us, if there's a, a relative uh, example that I could tie into the business. So it was like, uh, you know, Maryland required us. So we were foreclosing on a note and they required us to be a debt collector. So we had to go and get our debt collector license, spend all this time and money. And then right after that, there was a case that settled it that said you don't have to, you know, owners of the mortgage are not debt collectors. So, you know, write a little article and a little summary on that or, you know, just at current events. Um, there are um, different uh, changes that, there's so many things out there. If you're just in, you know, on some of the news sites and you say things relative to your industry, um, just write a little paragraph and, and blast that out. Chris, what's the, what's some way that you've recently improved your business that we can apply to ours? Well, one is that I, I, I'm considering implementing is I met an accountant at a show last week, week and a half ago, and he suggested that, with the changes to the tax laws benefiting REITs that I bolt a REIT onto our fund and actually use the REIT to buy the notes and then sell it or transfer it to the fund. And while I do, I'm not an expert on it, I just learned about it. I thought it was a great strategy because it'll help um, lower the tax burden on the investors, especially on, on either capital or short-term gains. So, as I research it more, you know, I never thought I'd be adding a REIT to my note fund, but it, it appears that it's very doable when you have the right accountant that, that knows how to do it. Having the right accountant is, is key, right? It's very important. It really is. So what's the number one thing that's contributed to your success, Chris? Um, hard work, just being dedicated, uh, you know, Donald Trump, love him or hate him, he's got a great book called Never Give Up. And you can't, you have to keep going. And you're gonna run into roadblocks and heartache and obstacles, and but they're all just stumbling blocks. I mean, they're all just hurdles to be overcome. Um, I try, I'm really not hanging out on Facebook all day, just wasting my time. I'm actually working out, you know, looking for notes, working them out. Mm -hmm working with investors and there's, there's a lot of things to um to doing this so and, and it could be anything if you're flipping same thing you got to have your lenders you got to have maybe your gap funders you got to have your wholesalers or wherever you get your or good realtors same with apartments or commercial so there's 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 so many pieces to the puzzles that's not like just you know you're a stock trader or something so, Chris, uh, is there a need in your business right now that you'd like to put out to uh, the listeners? A need right now? Well, the biggest need is to help us fill our fund. Uh, you know, we're, <laughs> we're raising uh, $10 million. There are so many notes out there right now. I talked to a seller who's got 6,000 notes. Uh, so there's no, and that's not counting the 9 uh, billion still at the banks that they're doing who knows what with. These are non-paying notes. And, um, you know, $10 million is about 500 plus notes approximately, give or take. So it's a drop in the bucket uh, for the big picture, but that's, it's still quite a bit to have going. That's like 500 plates spinning at one time. So you remember the guy at the circus spinning the plates. You got to keep on checking bankruptcies and foreclosures and things like that. But you know, then keep it, and then outreach to the borrowers to get them to repay. So there's a lot to it. So uh, there's there's plenty of notes out there. All the the puzzle pieces are in place with servicing and title, 
uh, curation to fix any bro breaks in the title. You know, we have, I love attorneys. We have attorneys in almost every state. And, and the only thing missing is the capital. So, mm -hmm. and I think a lot, a lot of your listeners probably have that no matter what they're doing. Yeah. They need, every, you know, everything revolves around capital. So Chris, before we have to go, tell, tell us how you like to give back. Well, I like to give back by sharing what I know with other investors. Um, I remember when I first started, I reached out to someone when I was learning the junior liens and he goes, you know, I'm just not set up to help you. And I kind of maybe got a little frustrated and just moved on. But now that I've been doing this for a while, I'm almost realizing why he said that because it really is uh, a challenge. And someone who contacts you that has absolutely no experience wants to pick your brain for two hours and go get coffee and I'm, it, it's a challenge. And so I try and, you know, point them in the right direction uh, to maybe some things that they could start with online. There's a lot of free content out there where they don't have to spend a lot of money. And uh, at the same time, I, uh, when I hit 50 notes, I decided to write a book called 50 Notes in 50 Months and, and kind of go over how I got into it and, and the steps and all that. So it's in a book form that I don't have to repeat it. You know, here, here, I'll, here's a book, I'll send it to you. And then this is just how, you know, and it's really just focusing and not getting distracted. There's, there's a million shiny objects out there. I, I got kind of sidetracked. Thought I was gonna be Mr. Fix and Flip in Dallas and I flopped completely. It's the, the, the market here is so cut. There, there's a hundred wholesalers. Hmm. And to try and compete with them is just, you need a lot of capital. Uh, so I just put my blind, my note blinders on and I'm just really focused on notes right now. Nice. Well, there's a lot to be said about focusing, right? Move, keep it on moving forward. Never yeah. giving, giving up like, uh, like the book you mentioned. Yeah. You can do apartments and there's uh, land contracts and then there's owner finance and then there's wraps and you know, uh, the lease options and there's no shortage of shiny objects. So it's really the best thing is stick with one or find one that you, you know, list them all. Look at the one that you think would be the easiest, that has the easiest barrier to entry, you know, single family home notes versus, you know, a 500 apartment complex. It's a big difference. And then learn your trade, try not to get distracted. And then once you start getting better at one, you can add other pieces to it if you'd like. Nice. No, I appreciate you, that. Yeah, because otherwise you're just, you're just doing all this work and you're not doing, you know, you're master of nothing. Chris, you know, thank you again for being on the show and uh, tell the listeners how they can get in touch with you and learn more about you. Oh, great. So, um, you know, I'm on LinkedIn and uh, you can reach me on the search me on LinkedIn. Our regular company, Silverwood Capital LLC. I'm still buying and selling notes. Uh, people approach me to sell notes or buy from them. So that's SilverwoodLLC.com. So an email would be info at SilverwoodLLC.com. And then our, if you're an accredited investor, I'd love to have you take a look at our fund, see what you think about it. And that's SilverwoodCapitalFund.com. So silverwoodcapitalfund.com, you can access the prospectus and send me an email. And if you have any, you know, cwinkler at silverwoodcapitalfund.com. And I'd love to answer any questions or help people out to, you know, as, as, as much as I can. Great. Great. Thank you again, Chris. And I appreciate the listeners uh, being with us today. I also hope you all go to LifeBridge Capital and connect with me or also go to our Facebook group. And I, I want you to know that I'm posting the uh, future guests on the group so you can uh, put questions on there. You want me to ask them and I'll try to ask them on the show, uh, you know, network on there with other people in the business. So uh, other experts. So uh, thanks again, Chris. And thank you for the you know, listeners being here and we will talk to you all tomorrow. Thank you. Appreciate the chance to talk with you. Thank you for listening to the Real Estate Syndication Show brought to you by LifeBridge Capital. LifeBridge Capital works with investors nationwide to invest in real estate, while also donating 50% of its profits to assist parents who are committing to adoption. LifeBridge Capital, making a difference, one investor and one child at a time. Connect online at www.lifebridgecapital.com for free material and videos to further your success.